Hi there, it's Dr. Carrie Ann. Citizen science has always been a great way to participate in science, but now it also offers a powerful gateway to learning. Today, I'm gonna to introduce you to one of my favorite projects available on SciStarter.org, Sourdough Science. And I'm gonna give you some tips on how to extend the learning beyond the science of the project. Humans have been making, baking, and eating bread for over 10,000 years, but scientists still don't know a lot about those microbes that give us all those delicious carbs. Participating in this project will help scientists to better understand how the types of flour influence microbial growth, and those microbes in turn determine the texture, flavor, and aroma of the bread that we love to eat. This project is a great jumping off point for a bunch of important topics in biology and chemistry. You can extend your learning into microbes, pH, anaerobic and aerobic respiration, fermentation, data collection, and graphing just to name a few. So let's go over the basics of what doing this project looks like, and then I'll come back and give you some ideas for how to go even further. The Sourdough Science Citizen Science Project is great for the classroom or home because it doesn't require a lot of specialized supplies, and you can ramp it up or ramp it down depending on the age and ability of the students you're working with. You probably will need to special order some pH papers from a place like Amazon. Other than that, you should be able to round up everything else in your house or classroom. Go to the website and you can download detailed directions and a materials list and print off a copy of the data sheet that you'll need to record all of your observations. Once you have everything in place, you're gonna set up your experiment, something like this. Notice that each jar has a label. Those labels include the start date, the type of flour in the jar, and my initials, so we know who did what when. And every day, we're gonna take some important measurements. One, we're gonna measure our pH each day with a new, fresh pH strip. You're gonna to touch it to the back of your sample so it doesn't discolor your pH squares. That'll just make it easier to read when you go to compare it against the color chart. You're also going to measure the height of your starter each day, and both of those measurements will be recorded on your data sheet. And lastly, you also wanna do an aroma test most days, which means you're gonna to need to uncap it just like you would to do the pH, or the height measurement, and then you're gonna take a big whiff, and this one smells really sour. It's well on its way to forming a great sourdough starter. Then you can cover it back up and put it back in a spot without direct sunlight. After 14 days, you'll have completed your data sheet and have a sourdough starter. It's not citizen science until the data has been submitted. So make sure at the end of the experiment, you upload all of your amazing data on SciStarter.org so scientists can start analyzing your findings. Transcribe your data into the digital file, upload a photo of your data sheet, upload photos of your starter, and click Submit. And bam, you're doing SitSci like a pro. Let's talk about ways to extend our learning from this project. An obvious question to ask is, what are those microbes doing in there that's turning it into sourdough starter? Which in turn might lead students to wonder, how do microbes make yogurt? Well, now you can get into all sorts of research and investigation into cellular respiration, both aerobic and anaerobic and even fermentation. Or maybe students are interested in pH. What is pH? What do we mean by an acid and what makes something an acid? Or what makes something basic? And what do we mean by that? You could also have students investigate the macromolecules that make up living things. So bread is a carbohydrate predominantly. What are the other macromolecules that make up living things? And why do they make up living things? And do they share anything in common? Why do we call them macromolecules? Those are just a few ways that you can go further with this project and touch on topics that are gonna show up in traditional chemistry and biology classes. After all, the more you know, the more you know. Step 1.
fun is to go to SciStarter.org slash education. Scroll down on the SciStarter.org education page where you'll see projects for multiple grade bands. Click on the one that says Sourdough for Science. On the Sourdough for Science page, you'll notice that there are a list of materials and background information to help you understand the context around this project. You'll also notice there are additional resources that even include a parent-teacher guide, instructions, and the student activity sheet. One of the most beneficial resources on this page is the Students Discover link under Step 1. Click this link to see step-by-step -step photo instructions on how to do this project. The Student Discover page will guide you through this project. If you scroll down on the page, you'll see that there is a teacher guide, a context around the activity, curriculum alignment and standards, and scroll down a little more to see the materials list of what you'll need to do the project. One of the most helpful parts of this whole page is this, the step-by-step -step images to guide you through the process. Click on step one, step two, to visually see what this should look like. Now, while you're doing the process, it's important to make sure you have your data sheets. You can click on the links in the bottom that have activity overview, your data sheet to keep track of your observations as you go, and more step-by-step -step teacher instructions. Finally, when your whole project is done, make sure to click the button that says enter your data because true citizen science is contributing to the larger scientific community. You click on enter your data, when you've completed your project, it's time to enter your data. You can click this link and it will take you back to SciStarter.org. Back on SciStarter.org, you want to make sure you log in or sign up for your SciStarter account. This will ensure that your observations appear on your SciStarter dashboard. If you scroll down the page, you'll see that there is space available to enter the data you collected throughout this project. When you are finished uploading your data and your images from your project, you can click the Submit button at the bottom of the page. SciStarter, science we can do together.